Long day, huh? Could you pick up a carton of eggs and some toilet paper on your way home? Huh? Are you serious? What were you doing all day? Sorry. It's too much trouble to go out. You know, the baby is coming soon and my back is killing me. Your schedule is pretty much set. Why don't you work out a daily schedule so you could do these things instead of just sitting around all day? Can't always rely on me to do everything. I'm working full time, you know? Yeah, I know. Sorry. But this is the first time I'm having a child. I really don't know what to expect or how, as you say, schedule things. And I'm worried. I've never done this before. Worried? Doesn't that come naturally? Didn't your mom tell you anything? I mean, give me a break. I'm tired after working my ass off all day. I realize you're pretty busy, and I'm really grateful that you work so hard. But do you really have to take such an attitude? If I could, I would go out myself and buy it. I just wasn't feeling very well. I'm up to my ears in work. I mean swamped. Never seems to work out. I need a little release here. The stress is killing me. That's why I always want to talk, discuss your problems. We are husband and wife, after all. You're the one that's avoiding it, Nate. You always say it's no use talking to me, but I would not understand. You just shut me out every time. All right already! Would you stop with that, please? I'll stop by on the way back and pick up what you need. Eggs and toilet paper, right? Man, I was all ready to go out for a few drinks with the guys. Now I have to go grocery shopping. Dear God! So you don't get tired of going out for drinks, huh? Can't you just give me a little support? When the kid is born, I'll give you all the support you need. So stop whining all the time. You make it sound like I'm not doing anything. This child that's coming. This child is ours, not just mine. I just want you to have a little awareness that you're going to be a father. I read somewhere that men take a little longer than women to get to that point of awareness. It's just natural. Guys are like that. Ugh, that's the worst excuse I ever heard. Lots of men help their wives when they're pregnant. Some even take time off to be with their wives. Yeah, there are pansy guys like that out there. I'm not one of them. At least those pansy guys are a lot more responsible than you. What's with you? you Seem so irritable. Yes, women get that way when they get pregnant. Before you start criticizing me, maybe you should fix that attitude of yours. Stress might also affect the kid. A mother is supposed to be strong. She shouldn't be whining just because the husband isn't around. What about those soldiers who go off to war for months on end? Their wives don't complain. Hey, Caroline, how's the baby? Oh, hi, Mom. You really don't have to call so often. You called at least four times today. Well, I can't help it. My grandchild is coming. How can I not get excited? And you also said you had a contraction this morning, right? I was just a bit worried is all. I really appreciate your concern. Thank you so much. The delivery date is passed, so it's any time now. Please don't worry. If the contractions come, I'll be sure to let you know. No need to keep calling. Please do. I'll rush over right away. That really eases my mind and... Uh... Hey, what's the matter? I think I just felt a contraction. I think my water broke. Huh? Are you serious? Uh... It may just be premature. It doesn't seem like much. Uh, maybe I just peed myself. People are different. For some, it's really all out, but for others, like you, even if it's just a little, it may be breaking. This may be it. Most of all, we have to be calm about this. We better call the hospital just in case. I am calm. I'm fine. No problem. But maybe you're right. I will call the hospital, see what they say. <laughs> hey, Nate. Are you home yet? I think this may be it. My water just broke. 
think I think the contractions are starting, so I'm going to head out to the hospital just in case. Could you drive me to the hospital? Breaking water, huh? Baby's not coming yet, right? Well, that's why I'm going to the hospital. This may be it. Oh, okay. Then when the baby's about to be born, let me know then. I'll rush over ASAP. Besides, I already had quite a bit to drink. No way I can drive. Oh, I see. So, you're out drinking with the guys again? All right. I guess there is nothing you can do. But get over here right away when the contractions really start coming. Don't get too drunk. You're off tomorrow too, so you can... All right. Already. Quit repeating yourself. I said I'll be over ASAP. Hey, Nate. The contractions are really starting up, and the pain is getting shorter and shorter in between. The doc says the baby may be born by sunset. Hey, Nate. Are you seeing this? Why won't you answer? It's already 1 a.m. Where are you? Please, get over here. I'm really in pain. <laughs> Please come here as soon as you can. Please. So, you never made it over here. The baby was delivered already. Oh, yeah? Baby's here, huh? Sorry. Hard night, huh? Hard night? Are you kidding me? This is our first baby! How could you go out drinking with your buddies? I said I was sorry. Besides, I have a splitting headache. I'm gonna sleep a bit first before I head over there. And I reek of booze. Can't be going to a hospital in this condition. <laughs> Aren't you coming to the hospital? I mean, it's almost noon for God's sake. Uh, come on, Mom. Get off my back! I said I would be right over. I have a really bad hangover. I can hardly move. Give me a break! Your wife just had your child. How could you be out drinking at a time like this? She even called you last night and told you she was having contractions. My God! What's going on in that little head of yours? Caroline is just so whiny. Always talking back. I'm tired of it! I mean, come on! What's a little contraction? Women have been giving birth for thousands of years. Nate, get one thing straight. Whom do you think you're talking to right now? I'm your mother for God's sake. So what's up with you, son? I said what's up. Yeah, uh, nothing. Nothing, huh? You don't have an excuse for being with your wife when she's having a baby? That nothing? Yeah, well... I'm sorry about that. I, you know, I'm super hungover and probably still a little tipsy from last night. Yeah, it seems that way. But you're all okay now, right? Yes, Mom. You told me that you had to work and couldn't make it to the hospital. And now here I am at the hospital and you are nowhere in sight. Caroline told me everything. What's with you? Are you her husband or not? She tells me you didn't even help out at home when she most needed it. She'd ask you to go shopping, and you'd complain and make some lame excuse. Do you think giving birth to a child is just a silly game or something? For your information, I risk my life giving birth to you. And Caroline is the same. She risked her life last night to bring your child into this world. This is your child, your own flesh and blood for God's sake. Yes, Mom, you're absolutely correct. Do you even realize how difficult it is to deliver a child? She was in pain for hours, with nobody at her side. You're going to be a father for Pete's sake. And to think you were so happy when you first heard she was pregnant, and that you were going to be a father. When your child grows up, and learns that you were out drinking with guys when Caroline was giving birth, you're going to have some explaining to do, that's for sure. Did you even give that a thought? Oh yeah, and Caroline told me, apparently your work isn't going so well. I realize the stress is unbearable, so you go out drinking. I just can't take it anymore! Nothing seems to go right for me at work! Everything I do, just falls flat! I was thinking of quitting, but then, 
wouldn't be able to support them. Think that such a no good loser is a father? A loser like me would never make Caroline and our new baby happy. That's, you know, what I've been thinking lately. Then why did you even say you wanted a kid in the first place? All Caroline wants is for you to be a good father and to be a family. You can make money anytime you want, but to have a child and a family, you lose that and you'll never get it back. It's something that you'll regret for the rest of your life. What's more, Caroline has given you countless opportunities to discuss things, work things out as a family, but you just shrugged her off. What's with this stubborn pride of yours? Isn't that what a family is for? No matter how down you are, you have Caroline and your child. Think about them and do your best to make them happy. That should get you through anything. What's more important is the relationship between a wife and a husband. You should always talk things out, trust each other. And that means talking about the good and the bad. Think long and hard about what I said. You need a little dose of reality. And until you do, I'm taking Caroline and the baby back to my place. When you're ready, call us. You got that, son? Huh? Back to your place? This is Caroline's idea. She doesn't want to see you right now after what you pulled. She said she'd rather stay with me for the time being. Apparently, she feels a lot more comfortable and safe being with me. She needs someone to take care of her. She says she's scared that things won't work out between you two. I'm more than happy to take care of her. What's more, her parents were all for it. I can handle things. Don't worry about it. I'll do all the chores. I can handle this. No need for you to go out of your way. What do you mean by handling things? Uh, I mean, you know, clean up and do the shopping. Stuff like that. Make things easier for her. There you go again. That's where you're wrong. You really don't get it, do you? You're working. You're not going to be able to handle it all by yourself. Besides, taking care of a baby and supporting your wife is not some half-assed job that you do on the fly. It's something you have to do as a father. It's common sense. Let me ask you this, son. Whose child is this? Mine. It's my kid. Yup. You got that right. You make it sound like you're doing the chores as some sort of job. As some stranger would do. He's your kid. Yeah, I get it, Mom. So, for now, I want you to get some rest and not have to worry about chores or going out shopping on her own. She's staying with me for a while. Also, I plan to talk to Caroline and her folks about measures that need to be taken in the future. I'll be at the hospital within the hour, so please. <laughs> Hello, Nate. Sorry I didn't get back to you. Caroline! Don't worry about it. You didn't have to call me. I did nothing for you. I'm a loser. Please, I don't ever want to hear you say that again. I'm really sorry. I heard all of it from your mom and dad. They told me you went to my folks' place every day after work. They told me you apologized to them over and over. I'm really sorry. I didn't know what got into me. Maybe I was just scared to be a dad. I just couldn't face up to reality. I plan to stop by every day, until you forgive me. You also stopped by here, every day too, right? Please forgive me, I just didn't know how to face you. I asked your mom to cover for me, to tell you I didn't want to see you. Yeah, I don't blame you, I was such a jerk. How are you? Are you feeling better? I don't suppose you'll be coming back home anytime soon. Yeah. It's really comfortable here. I can relax and focus on taking care of the baby. But it's funny. I seem to have a lot of time to relax, but then again, there never seems to be enough time. I know. Sounds weird, huh? No, I get it. Not weird at all. It's all my fault. A real jerk. But I'm thinking of going home pretty soon. I know you're really trying. I heard from your mom. She really gave you a dressing down, huh? She said you're doing all the household chores, cooking yourself, 
doing the laundry. You made all the preparations so that we can come home anytime, right? I also heard that you're not going out drinking with the guys much. Yeah. Actually, I haven't had a drink since that day. I was wrong. I was too reliant on you. I should have been taking better care of you. I screwed up my priorities. Well, it's easy to just talk, you know? You don't trust me after how I treated you. It's not something that you can forgive just like that. I figured I would do all I can. Do the right thing. And then if you really wanted to divorce me, well, I wouldn't have any regrets. I had to try first. They say people can't change so easily, but I didn't want to be someone like that. I wanted to change, for real. I have no intention of getting a divorce. Really? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I know you've been trying hard to repent. Your mom told me everything, even your folks. They asked me to tell you that when you stop by tomorrow. They want you to stay for dinner. Ever since that day at the hospital, you said you changed. And true to your word, you haven't deviated one bit. I'm really sorry. My folks were probably a little too rude. Please, I don't want you to apologize for this. It's all me. I'm the bad guy here. But I appreciate it. Really, thank you so much. But... I have no problem apologizing to my folks and showing them gratitude. But you really should apologize to your mom. She's the one that really took care of me and got you to change. She's busy with her own stuff, but she still takes time to look after me. You really owe her, you know that, right? Yeah, I know. I'll take the time to talk to her. I'll make sure to thank her for all she's done for you. For us. Just remember, just because I come home, it doesn't mean things will get easier for you. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to be harder. Of course, I will do as many household chores as I can, but I do have to take care of our child. It's a full-time job. Just be a good father. Can you do that? You can count on me. I'm not going anywhere. And about work, I'll take time and explain it all to you. Yeah, let's talk it out. I know how you feel not being able to do your job properly. It's frustrating. You may feel down at times, but I want to be by your side and support you whenever possible. I realize you have pride, but don't try and figure it out all by yourself. I'm here for you. We're husband and wife after all. Please don't ignore me. You're not a loser. I have faith in you, Nate. I always have. I'll be back home next week. Thank you. I won't let you down. I will try even harder once you return. You can bet on it. But it's not just me that's coming home. Yeah, I know. Our son, right? No. It will be the three of us. Your mom is joining us too. My mom? Of course. What if I return with our son and all the household chores, the cooking and cleaning... What if you decide that it's too much? What then? I'm returning to a husband who was out partying with his buddies when I was giving birth. I mean, you understand. I'm sorry, but I still can't trust you. I need a backup plan if things go sour. It's not only for me. It's also for our son. Yes, of course. I understand. Uh, Caroline, you've changed. You seem way more assertive. I suppose a little of my mom rubbed off on you. Uh, Nate, I think it was you who said, a mother has to be strong. After giving birth and moving in with Nate's mom, I asked Nate's friend about him. They all said he quit drinking and would hurry to my parents' place after work and apologized profusely for his despicable conduct. He also came to my mother-in-law's place, but she shooed him away every time. This went on for over three weeks, every day, even on the weekends. After three weeks of showing up every day, my parents finally relented and forgave him. They said he broke and cried. After that, I promised him. I returned home with our newborn son and Nate's mom. It had been one month since I left, and when we returned, I could not believe what I was seeing. The place was immaculate. He even prepared various baby goods and cooked dinner for us. 
There was no sign of alcohol anywhere, not even a can of beer in the fridge. And the dinner he prepared was out of this world. It was so delicious that tears welled up in my eyes. Several days after I returned, we also discussed his job. The problem was his relationship with his boss. That seemed to be the biggest obstacle at work. He told me of various incidents that he encountered. After hearing him out, I wish I had asked him earlier and I wish I could have done more for him. It had been a while since we talked as husband and wife. We really opened up to each other. Yes, there were some tears. After a while, he quit that job and joined a different firm that was better suited for him. His co-workers and his boss really welcomed him to the team. Now he's very happy with his new responsibilities. I've never prevented him from going out on occasion with his friends for a few drinks, but he has stopped drinking altogether. He even complained that some of his colleagues no longer asked him out, but he doesn't seem to mind. He quickly made new friends at the company who were more in sync with his new lifestyle. At one point, I was seriously thinking of divorcing him. I could not contemplate such a person as a father to my child. I'm not kidding. I thought about it over and over. I even discussed it with Nate's mom. Through this incident, I really understood the importance of trusting someone and that people can really change. Several years later, I was blessed with another child. As for Nate, he's a completely different person now, working hard to support his growing family. What's more, he was right by my side when I gave birth to my second child. That incident two years ago was like some kind of nightmare compared to the life I see before my very eyes. I'm super happy. What can I say?